reading or the reading of his word. Let us read together. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know what friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace? Therefore it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, your sinners. You purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will exalt you. Let us pray. Father, there is nothing, O Lord. Nothing in this world, nor riches, O Lord. There's nothing that we have, Lord God, even righteous doing. To have the right, to have the authority to call you Father. There's nothing, O oh Lord, that we can do to be able to be saved. But it is by your grace, Lord God, that we have received salvation. It is not because of righteous doing, but it is because of who you are. And so I ask, O oh Lord, forgive us, O oh Father. For all the things that does not glorify you as we listen to your word. Cleanse us, O Lord. Prepare our hearts, O Father. Prepare our minds, O Lord. That we just we, we will not just receive the word and along some mind, but also to obey, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to follow you, even in times of conflicts, in times of challenges in our lives. In times of what are happening around us, oh Lord God, that gives us anxiety, sorrow, and depression, oh Lord. Mold us as to who you want us to be. And I pray also, Lord God, for those people who are still coming. I pray for safety. And I pray that you prepare their hearts. Prepare me, oh Lord, to preach your word. That I shall preach based on who you are. Based on your wisdom. And not based on my own understanding. Guide my words, O Lord. Strike my heart, O Father. And use me for your glory. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. You may not be seated. Good morning, church. You know, last week, Gikan Mig Manila. Grabe ka delayed. Grabe ka delayed among flight. Eh, abot mi sa airport 3 a.m. Kaya among flight is scheduled 6 a.m. Then na-delayed because na problem ang plane. So ang latest nga adjustment sa plane is 11 a.m. So from 3 a.m. to 11 a.m. If you can imagine, grabe na ka-stress ang mga tao. Ipanggutong na, inay uban, dili sila pwede malate. Sa ilang atuan, napay uban, nga nai connecting flight. Ang nakatry na mo na, kanang dugay kay mong pinaabot, pero dili ikaw yung ipili. I'm safe that I'm wrong. Without kidding aside, after announcing a delayed kaya mong flight ang mga tao, if you can imagine, murag mga langaw na tapo. Nagtagbo ka ng kilay pa doon sa ga-announce. Naiuban nga, gapaka-paka ng ilahang pamalikas. English, Bisaya, Tagalog, Korean, Chinese. Tinood, because ang among mga kadungan kay mga foreigners. Now, pwede may muad to, magreklamo, magapilapil mo dito. And sa katunga situation, it's very easy magpada sa emotions. Dagan kayo ang nag-walk out, well, nag yaw, -yaw. and ang primiting at tubag sa mua, kay nangita na big way para sa katong dili pwede malate. So kami, nga katong pwede malate, okay ra. So that time, 
it's very easy na magpada sa panahon. It's the people, if the people that surrounds you are frustrated and angry, paspas kayo na matakot. But for us, no, we refuse to be consumed by anger. We refuse na magpada sa emotion. We refuse to ruin our time together with my wife. Diba? And it doesn't mean na we are better than the people na nasoko. It doesn't mean na perfect me because we can handle our emotions. No. We feel the same with them. We are frustrated, na sad me, naglagot me because 3 a.m. pa na sa airport, gutom na me. And it's just that this is something na di na mo makontrol. And getting angry, bisan pag mag-wild pa ka di, bisan pag magligid-ligid pa ka sa airport, it will not help you na makakuha imong gusto. Now, do you think if magsuko-suko mi dito, makalarga mi on time? No. Instead, we trusted the Lord. We trusted Him sa na-happen sa mong flight. Imagine if wala nila na-check na may problem ang plane, yung mular gami, pwede siya may mong accident. And so we were able to get, to let go sa mong kasuko. Yeah, wala mang pudmigadali, so wala sa mong nag-set of plans for that day. Instead, we thank the Lord for the safety na yung i-provide sa mga, plus ang free lunch na ilang gihatan. Now I'm sharing this because in our life, we are surrounded by different kinds of challenges. Conflicts, kumbaga. Pwede sa flight, pwede sa travel, pwede sa inyong school, pwede sa inyong workplace, pwede sa inyong family. And as you look at the people nga ng Christians, you look at how they respond to these same challenges. Ang ilang response is masuko, magwag, maglagot, magdapat, mangilad, pupasakit sa ilang kaugalingon, and even sa mga tao around them. And so ikaw, nakuyog nila, if you're a Christian, the question is, magpada ba ka sa unsay response nila? Or musalig ba ka sa ginoo? Musalig ba ka sa pamaagi sa ginoo? Musalig ba ka sa mga delays sa kinabuhi? Musalig ba ka sa mga no na gitubag ni Lord? So today sa itong book series sa James, James is going to teach us kung sa may rason nga nung naiaway-away, naikalagot, nga nung na may iwanani nga response, nga nung na may pagsupak-supak, nga nung na ay kagubot, nga nung lamig man dyan kayo mabuto basta maglagot. Ang say cause sa quarrels and conflicts sa ilang time where we can learn about it and what to, what to do para we can avoid this as we grow in the Lord. How do we overcome conflict? Not only inside the church but also in our daily lives. Let us now open our Bibles in James chapter 4 verse 1. By the way, ang sermon outline na may problem sa printer um, at Gail will be able to send that via online. Verse 1, immediately James started sa yung topic. Asa daya mag-start ang mga away and kabubo. And he never started who causes quarrels. He started what causes quarrels. Unsa? Actually, ang lain nga meaning sa kaning word na quarrel is the word war. Gubat. James is like saying, same rang source. Same rang origin kung nga sa gikan. Ang gamay nga kagubot sa simple nga wapag kasinapot o ang daku nga away nga grupo-grupo na nga naanay division. Now, is James talking about sa Christian and non-Christian nga away? Remember that James is talking to Christians. Growing Christians ang audience ni James. That means to say, ang kaning nga away nga pasabot ni James is happening inside the church. Church, dili tungod kay Christian na ka within a Christian community, it doesn't mean always okay ang relationship sa tanan. No. Kaninga giingon ni James can happen sa toa. Samot na sa growing Christians. You will see other churches that are also going through any problems. Christians versus Christians to avoid na nagrupo-grupo na. Napay uban nga mabot jud sa kinihaay na. And that's true. Church, remember that we are all fallen people. We are all fallen people growing in Christ. Lahi-lahi tag journey, in every journey, it will test kung unsa katinood ang atong faith ni Lord. It will let us see the things that we need to let go. The things nga dapat na to i-unlearn and the things nga dapat na to learn So now, in order to overcome something, in order to effectively overcome conflicts, conflicts nga dili lang sa church, but sa atong daily life, James started with this question. What causes quarrels and what causes fights? 
Now, we will need to know unsa day ang root cause, unsa hinungdan sa conflict. And most of the time, if pangutanon kag unsa hinungdan, usually ang tubag, siya mang good ay. Ang sitwasyon mang good, pastor. Si teacher mang good. Si mama mang good. Ang customer mang good. Ang manager mang good. Panag panagsara ka makadungan na yung nga, akong sa, nasayop ko. Ako ang sayop. Even pagpangayo og sorry sa atong generation today, lisod na kaayo. And the Lord in His Word gives us a clear reason. Nga nung na-acquire and fights within the Christian community? Nga nung na-conflict in this world? James said, the reason is your passion. Kung si pasabutan na, your pleasure, your selfish desires, that ang origin sa away and di pagkasinabot, ang root cause is your selfish motives. It comes from your selfishness. Imo lang ka o galingon imong ginawa. As long as happy ka, as long as nakuha ni mo imong gusto, self-indulgence, self-gratification. In short, the source is self. Imong ka o galingon. Nag-gets ang gingon ni James? The reason nga nung nai-conflict, nai-away, nai-gubot, na di pa kasinabot because nai-lain. Lain nga motibo. Motibo, ra, motibo nga ka o galingon ra'y ginawa. Na. Now nga naman, Na kay gusto may tabo, siya sad na. Sad sa'y gusto may tabo. Na kay gusto makuha, siya sad na. Sad sa'y gusto makuha. Some of you might say, Pastor Tats, di ka kaingon, anak. If kay baw lang ka sa akong sitwasyon, gibuhat na ako ang tanan. Kung di tungod niya. Di ba? If mo doon sa'y kasapikas nga side, ang tubag sa nila, kung nistorya lang siya sa'yo. Kung di tungod niya. So it's a cycle of blaming each other. Nobody, nobody wants to acknowledge that ang root cause is our sinful nature. An internal selfishness. Nobody wants to acknowledge na nasuko siya tungod kay wala niya nakuha iyang gusto. Tungod kay wala nasunod ang iyang gusto. Now, does it mean that even if now Christian na ka, does it mean it will go away ka ng selfishness? No. That's why it's an everyday battle. It's an everyday decision of choosing to resist or magpadaba ka. O nang ana si James, that battle within you. Kada adlaw imo na siyang i-battle. The battle, that battle means you are growing as a Christian. Ngano man. Because before ka na Christian, magpadara man kasi mong selfishness. And we can have comfort that we can win this battle because the Lord is with us. It should not dominate sa itong life. James, James is simply saying, don't look around, but look within you. Stop pointing your fingers and start asking yourself, is what I'm doing God glorifying or am I glorifying myself? Nasuko ba ko tungod kay wa na ko nakuha kong gusto? Or is this what the Lord wants? Or is this what I want? If you can remember, Kaning gipadad ni James, ani nga letter, these people are struggling in their daily lives. Ang uban na nila, naglisod sila pang adlaw-adlaw nga provision. And pwede nila irason na tungod sa ilang kahintang mo nang nakasa sila. They can blame their circumstances, they can blame their situation, but James gives us the source and it boils down deep sa itong hearts. The source is not about what's happening around us. But it's what's happening within us. Katong na-delay ng among flight, where do you think gikan ang mga pamalikas? It's not about the situation. But it's from within. It's, you see, church, if you continue to blame others in every conflict, you will never grow. You move from one organization, same issues, same conflict, sayup sila, sakto ka. You move from one church to another, sayup sila, sakto ka. You move from one relationship to another, sayop siya, sakto ka. It will continue until such time you will see this verse. And James is saying, the source of conflict is your own selfishness. Conflict takes two to tango. Kasi pasabot na. That means both sides na ipagkukulang. And if they continue to blame each other, it will never resolve the conflict. If ang other side will not acknowledge the young fault, if he will not listen, then that conflict will continue. Bisan asa siya mo And the same goes for you. Then the Bible gives us an example. Some example in verse 2. It said, 
if di na to makuha tong gusto sa mo fas mo patay jud murder and jesus said in the eyes of god hatred and murder is the same thing if you hate someone lagot jud kay kaning a person it means you have also murdered him in your mind and selfish people can endanger others if kakita mo sa news sa social media naman gyud nato makita ng mga news most of the time if kakita mo sa news na nagpinatyan na yung tricycle drivers and based on news tungod kay ang isa manapaw og linya pagkuha og customer di ka paabot gusto mga kwarta dayon ang isa nga naglinya og sakto nagpaabot na suya pero tungod sa kalagot kaya niya mo patay so kinsay sad anon say source sa ilang conflict think about it ang isa tungod sa yang selfishness sa pagpangwarta ang isa the same gusto ko makapangwarta but kaning tawhan na mas lindot ni sa pagyo si the source of conflict boils down to selfishness is it wrong ang manapa or magilad of course it is it is wrong is it wrong ang mupatay of course it's wrong sa gingon pa ni Jesus Christ ng katong hatred and murder the same thing we see the gravity This is very true sa tong time today. Tagaan ta mong example. Mga comments sa inyong social media about may pagmamatay ka or mamatay pa lang ka. These are words of hate. Mura na kag nipatay gamit sa imong words. So ang kaning giingon ni Jesus Christ, now it makes sense in our time today. And to think yan ang giswa 2,000 years ago. Sa ilaha face to face, sa toa, comment, comment lang sa post. Niya, create din ka of fake accounts. That's what's the what's happening in our social media right now. Create fake accounts, comment ka dito, may pagmatay ka. And during the times of COVID, grabe yung panggawa sa cyberbullying. Nga ang mga comment kay paghikuboy. Even as young as 9 years old, 10 years old, makadung pag ingunanin ng mga comments. Makabasa ka ingunanin ng comments. You see, why am I emphasizing this? Because murder and hate in the eyes of the Lord same rana siya kabugaton. And in saying na mamatay pa lang ka or paghikog, that shows the Lord that you have already murdered that person in your mind. Just because, kung saan, nasuya ka, na insecure ka, because wala sa'yo muha kung kung sa'yo inaasaya. Now, during sa time ni James, walay cellphone, walay social media, makita ni mo ang kinabuhi sa obang tao. But sa atong time today, halos every second sa life sa isa ka tao, or every hour, Kaibaw ka kung gaon sa siya. Kung asa siya, unsa yung last gikaon, kung unsa kanindot ilang balay, unsa kanindot yung cellphone, unsa kanindot ang naay karelasyon, ang naay kadate. And this is where it starts ang kaning selfish desires. Nga nindot kayo if ikaw po dun ta. Sana all. Unta tanan. Unta ako po. Manifest. And as you look at them and you see yourself, you will always think, My life is kulang. And para makontento ko, dapat nindot ang akong balay. Same sa kanina ako nakita sa Facebook. Dapat lami akong food. Ang food. Same sa akong nakita sa Facebook. Dapat nindot akong food. Same sa akong nakita sa FB. But wala man, so become grumpy. You get angry. Maglagot ka sa imong parents, kahit yun lang matag imong gusto. Maglagot ka sa imong karelasyon. Kaya nga nung dili siya same ka sweet sa nakita niyo sa social media. Maglagot ka sa imong boss kaya wala niya gihatag ang para sa inyo. Selfish people lack contentment sa ilang life. They are unsatisfied. Church, social media becomes the standard sa society during this generation. In this generation. Mawaw na kamu share sa inyong balay because di kayo ingon anak kanindot niyong balay. Ang ending mangilad na ka. Looking at the lives of others, you will continue to desire their lives. May pa sila. That ends you hating your life. That ends you asking for more. More things that no longer glorifies the Lord. Sa time ni James, these Christians are surrounded by people na dilik nila same of values. Di nila same of gino. Di nila same of belief. Di nila same of culture. Now, as they look at the lives of those people na dilik Christian, probably kakita sila, pwede rin na yung maghubog. Ay, Pwede rin ay lucky to lucky. Pwede rin ay bisan kinsa ang paris. Pwede rin ay mangabit. Pwede rin ay mangilad. 
as they look at them, some of them are probably thinking, may pa sila. Sa to, as a so we, we use social media, scroll kagamay, nanay pornography. Scroll pa jud kagamay, nanay post ba sa bububog. Next ang post, bayin sa nightlife, party-party. Next nga post, bayin sa yabuyab. And then later on, you hear yourself, sana all. May pa sila. It ends you desiring these things to a point that you don't care about the church. You don't care if baka pasakit ka glain tao. You don't care about the word ni Lord. You end up, di nakatig simba. You don't care about the people sa mong church, kung kamusta na sila, kung how you can help them. Because you think, I deserve this. I need to focus on myself later than as the Lord. You see how far selfishness can separate us from the Lord. That leads us to the next point. Not only that selfish people lack contentment, but selfish people also lack God. When you focus too much on yourself, you try to do things on your own strength. That's why Anna said, James, you do not have because you do not ask. Some of us, si Lord kay last option. Modoo lang ta ni Lord when everything is crumbling down. Kung di na kaya. Selfish people, most of them don't have any prayer life. Why would I pray if I can provide for myself? Kung yun ako mo pray, if di na ako ka provide sa akong self. And kanina statement ni James is both encouraging and medyo sakit. The Bible tells us that the Lord knows your needs. So why not ask Him na ihatag niya? And the Bible also tells us, kung sa hindi mahatag na ito because ang atong tumong sa'yo, ang atong motives sa'yo. That means na naasay selfish people na naay prayer life, pero nailain niya motibo. Selfish people ask something to God, not to glorify God, but to glorify themselves. They replace God with themselves. Gusto nila sila ang ginoon silang life. Sila'y magbuot, sila'y himayaon, sila'y ipray sa mga tao. They are forgetting kung kinsa si Lord. Nagahanta mo example. Lord, please provide bagong cellphone. Nga naman, if i-provide na ni Lord, mas upadool ba ka niya? Mas malayo lang ugsamot or mas malayo lang kagsamot. Will you use that phone to keep sharing the word of God? Kasi mailhan niyo mong isa katao nga grabe pa salamat ni Lord. If he or she uses that blessing to lead people to God. Lord, pray ko kuya. Nga naman, if you provide ni Lord, ready na ba ka sa kami niyo? Is it for the Lord na relasyon or is it for your own selfishness? Wala lang. Gusto lang ko mo try. Try, 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 try. Nga, sige kag try, try. Pag abot mo sa marriage, puno na kag trust issues. Selfish people never enjoys life. Everything sa ilang life is always kulang. That's why na yung mga beat, because I wanted more. Selfish people will try everything para lang makuha yung lang gusto. Mupatad sa loto, magsugal. Munang magtuuto na lang o manifest law of attraction because they want an easy life. Gusto nila magic ang ilang life. For Christians, it's not magic or universe, but it's a walk with the Lord. And that walk will take time from a little faith to a deeper faith. That's why Anna si James, you don't ask the Lord because you are not walking with the Lord. Wala ka kaiba kung sa'y plano ni Lord sa'y mong life. Wala ka kaiba kung sa'y sakto pa ngayon ni Lord because you are not walking with the Lord. In short, you don't know Him. You are only thinking about yourself. What you know is kung sa'y mong mga desires but you don't know kung sa'y desires ni Lord para sa'y mong life. Your prayers are not glorifying God, but it is self-glorifying. And sometimes there are people na ginagamit ang prayer to get their selfish desires. Pastor, papray kong motor. The moment nagka-motor, wala na nibalik sa search. Lahi na ang angkas. Pastor, papray kong work. The moment nagka-work na, wala na nibalik sa church. Pastor, papray kong uyab. The moment nagka-uyab, wala na nibalik sa church. Pastor, papray kong business. The moment nagka-business, wala na nakabalik sa church. Kay open ng business every Sunday. Some people will use prayer requests and share sa mga dato because they have their own personal motives. Diri ko mo share ni nga person because I know that this person can provide. Ang tao na ang provider, dili na si Lord. That's how selfish man can be. Gamiton pa si Lord, in short, opportunista. Sometimes prayers are our excuse. Uy, nalagi kay new phone. Prayer answered ni Bay? Akong gipatad sa online sabo. 
Ingunan na day mo answer si Lord? Mo gamit og sugal? Is it an answered prayer kung kung nay kauban na sala? Of course not. We are now forgetting who God is. Kung kinsa siya, kung unsa sa kamaayo, that he is perfect, that he is holy, and we are also called to be holy. Selfishness leads us to forget God. To a point nga ganahan ta na si Lord mo support nato. Bisan pag ang kinabuhi nato na sa sala. That's why siguro na yung mga tao nga mabutang og image nga naa si Lord sa ilang balay while nagbuhat og dautan. Are you not afraid with that? Butang-butang kag cross the river ginagamit nato sa yawa. Is that how we are called to live our lives as a Christian, as a follower of God? So remember who God is. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, kani easy to remember 7:11. So whenever makita ang 7:11, remember this verse. I will read it in Bisaya. Kung kamong mga tao nga daotan, kahibaw muatag sa maayo nga mga butang dito sa inyong mga anak, unsa na lang ka ang amahan nga naa sa langit? Ihatag jud niya ang maayo nga mga butang sa mga mangayo kaniya. Mao ni promise ni Lord, he will give you good things for his glory. If makahimaya niya, ano kundi niya ihatag niya kung mangayo ka? Lord, I want a relationship that glorifies you. Ano kundi niya ihatag if makita niya nga ready na ka? See, the Lord will give you what you need para sa iyang kahimayaan for His glory. And there are also instances when the Lord is, when the Lord's answer is no. Lord, I want a relationship. God says no. I know kung say maayo para ni mo and I will say no. Lord, gusto kong trabaho. God says no. I know kung say maayo ni mo and I will say no. That's how good our God is. Kay ba siya kung say maayo para ni mo and sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes ang maayo para nato is his no. Selfish people will not accept no as an answer. If no ang answer ni Lord, selfish people will go to other gods. Maglo of attraction na lang ko. Magmanifest na lang ko. Bahala nagmasakitan sila, basta happy ko. It becomes a problem kung mamugos na ta ni Lord. And this is how James described a selfish man who forgets God. In verse 4, you adulterous people. That's how God describes a selfish man. Adultery. Adultery is babae nga minyo nga nangabit. James is saying, muramug mga babae nga nangabit. In the eyes of the Lord, kita nga church, we as a church, kita ang bride, siya ang groom. Kita ang wife, siya ang husband. So for Christians, Jesus is our husband. Siya ang atong bana. In the moment, yung mas piliyo na ito ang kalibutan kaysa niya, mararatag niya yun nga, kuwang ray mong love, Lord. Mas nindot ang love sa kalibutan. Our husband tells us what to do. Nasa Bible, pero nga nung supakon ng Diyon natin. Being a Christian means I am a follower of God. I am a follower of my husband. I desire what he desires. Ang kaning mga tao sa time ni James, remember that they are surrounded by people na dili Christian. Surrounded by people na lahi o gino, lahi o moral values. Yet some of them, Instead ng magpabiling follower ni Lord, nahimo na noon og follower sa kuon sa'y nakapalibot nila. James said, a friend of the world is an enemy to God. He was reminding the Christians na we are made holy, we are separated from them, we are different from the world. It is us Christian who should influence the people around us and lead them to God. To be the same as us, dili kay balik. Kita na noon ang naimpluensyan sa kalibutan. And that's how social media is doing sa itong minds. It is us that is being influenced. We are no longer discipling, no longer posting about the Lord because we want to be accepted by the world. That's why you call adultery, loving the world, when we are called to love the Lord. That's why choosing your circle matters. Choosing the people that surrounds you matters. Choosing the content that you see on your social media matters. The Gansa Tuan no longer understands who we are as Christians. On sa ato mga responsibilities as Christians and on sa mga pamaagi para we can grow our relationship. This world will tell you, pwede rin na nimo i-add si Lord sa mong life. But the word, the Bible is clear, the Lord is the life. Some people will, pl will promote the Lord is love. So makasabot ra siya na ako, no, the Lord is holy unless you believe in Him and follow Him, what you will receive is not love but His judgment. 
James is simply saying, if you are in conflict sa imong relasyon ni Lord, your life will also be in conflict. Kung gubot na gani imong relasyon ni Lord, makita jud na sa imong kinabuhi. That's how conflict starts. And then James said on verse 5 and 6, let me paraphrase this. James is like saying, did you know that the moment you believe in Christ, madawat ni mo ang balang Espiritu, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And kana nga Holy Spirit sa inyong life, it will convict you that you will desire, you will seek the will of the Lord. It will show you unsay sayuk that kana mong ginabuhat sayuk na sa mata sa gino. And God is so gracious that while sige pagkasala sa iya, is gracious sa imuha, that puhun you will walk away from that sin once you humble yourself na si Lord, na Lord, sakto ka sa iyo po. Now let me tell you about conviction. Conviction is a change of thought. That's how the Holy Spirit helps us. Change of thought na na I will to follow that thought. That now you understand that it's wrong sa mata ni Lord, you have the urge to walk away from it, to endure it, to resist it. Kana nga thought and will to obey will grow sa iyo mo. That's why ang kausaban, transformation of your life, dili immediately may tabo. It takes time. Sometimes the Lord will use any events in your life to help you para maundangan ni mo ang kanangasala. And sometimes it's a painful process. But let me, let me share to you my story. When I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, palahubog pa kong dako. I was in an immoral relationship. But the thought was already there. I know nga sayog siya sa mata ni Lord. But makahapi man good. Lingaw man good. And same raman ko sa uban. Normal raman ni sa kalibutan. Mao naman ni normal karon. So I continued. Now, di pa ko pastoran niya. Early years of being a Christian. And dili siya days or weeks or months. It took me years to walk away from drunkenness, from immorality, from pornography. The Holy Spirit will guide you to let you see unsa di ang sayo sa mata ni Lord. And kana nga change is not immediate. Sometimes it's invisible sa tong eyes, but that change will start to grow within you. So from no prayer life, if I'm going to summarize it, from no prayer life, a selfish person, person without any prayer life, if naaman gani prayer life, wrong motive pa yun, then a person, nga an enemy to the Lord, influenced by the world. So now it's clear sa tua. The root cause of conflicts is self. Our selfish desires. It's not the circumstances. Not others. Not the people around us. But ourselves. And the effects are very dangerous. It can endanger the people around us. It leads to a life that lacks contentment. A life without joy. A life nga permikuwang. Another effect is forgetting God. A life nga walay prayer life. If na amang gani, wrong motive than to a life ng an enemy to God. So now, kay na nataasagi ka ng conflict. And unsay effect niya sa tong life. So how do we overcome it? Unsaon man nato pagkadaog sa selfishness ng naan nato within. The following verse will explain it in verses 7 and 10. Submit yourselves before God. Humble yourself. This should be our everyday reminder. Nga it is you, Lord, that I serve. It is you, Lord, na nakaibawon sa'yo maayong para na ako. It is you, Lord, na nakaibawon sa'yo para angay na ako ni Kinabuya. Submit means kung sa'yo maayo para niya, para ni Lord, that's what I'm going to follow. Lord, here's my life. Starting today, I will seek you. Seek what glorifies you. Seek kung sa'yo mga dapat na itong tangtangon sa itong life. It's acknowledging na si Lord ang masunod, si Lord ang mo-bless, si Lord ang Lord sa mong life, dili ikaw, si Lord ang captain sa mong life, dili ikaw. That means everything na naan ako is from you, Lord. I don't deserve the good things in this life, yet God loves me. What ay angay nga panghin, mapanginampog or right nga mga ayo. Even in, in my personal prayer time with the Lord, maulaw ko mga ayo ni Lord because I know that I don't deserve to be given gifts. When you have that attitude, when the Lord answers that prayer, your life will be full of gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Because you know, say among self, what kay right to receive that. But because you ask the Lord for the glory of God, the Lord gives through His grace. Submitting our life means, here's my life, akong submit ni mo. I give this to you, then I follow you. 
Here I am, Lord, send me. Dili kay, there they are, Lord, send them. The Lord answers prayers, and not because you can and you deserve it, but because He can and He deserves the glory and praise. It's a life of contentment because you are grateful knowing that it came from the grace of God. That's why when you know nga gika ni Lord ang blessing, kay bao ka unsaon pagampi, kay bao ka unsaon paglaw, kay bao ka unsaon ni mo nga dili selfish but God glorify. Lord, I will use it. I will take care of it for your glory. You gave not because I deserve, but you gave because of your grace. Mas ampinga ni mo kung kaibaw ka nga di ka deserving makadawat anak. So sa my connection, ano sa conflict? If ang root cause sa conflict is ourself, within us, then to fight this is to submit your life to the Lord. A life na submitted to the Lord nga mauna kay si Lord. It's not a selfish life. It's a self-denying life. That's why Jesus Christ said, deny yourself. Deny yourself to the desires of the world and submit to the will of the Lord. That's one way to overcome conflict. God is saying, remove your motives, your personal agenda. Remove your self-glorifying motives and seek on sa akong will. Obey my will. Selfish people don't submit to the Lord. They want to be the Lord of their lives. Another thing again on the ring, resist the devil. Remember what I said to you about the Holy Spirit convicting you, changing your thoughts. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you to resist the enemy. To walk away from sin. That means fight it. Fight it every single day. If papil di man ka, balik, barug. Follow the Lord again. Fight it again. Try to fight it again later on. If na po temptation, resist again tomorrow. Fight the devil. Fight the temptation. Selfish people don't resist the devil. They are willing to be devoured by the devil. Devoured by their anger and motives. Selfish people know nga sayog sa mata ni Lord, but will I urge to follow the Lord? These people can be very good sa Bible. They can be pastors or church leaders nga kani sayog ni, sakto ni, but sa actual application sa ilang life, they failed to apply it because nagpadaha sila sa ilang selfish desires. That's why James said, we have the Holy Spirit to resist, to have that urge of obeying the Lord to walk away from sin, to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Another one, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Very easy to understand. Draw near to God, come close to God, and he will come close to you. Dool niya, in mo dool sa tiyan mo. That's a promise, Gika ni Lord. Church, if you want to know how to handle the root cause of conflict, dool ni Lord. If the problem is your selfish desires, then dool ni Lord. Why? Because drawing near, near to the Lord will humble us. Drawing near to the Lord will help us resist the devil. Drawing near to the Lord will help us see His will, His desires for us. Drawing near to the Lord will let us see kung sa takahugaw at ubangan niya. The more tamo dool ni Lord, the more tama kita sa itong mga sayo. The more that our convictions will grow. The more nga mo grow ang atong urge of following God. That's why Anna si James, mourn. Kaguol because the more ka mo padool ni Lord, the more ni mo ma-realize nga ang tanan sa mong kinabuhi, grasya ra tanan sa gino. And yet, usahay pilion pa yun ni mo ang kalibutan kaysa sa iya. Kung ang mga sala sa una, dako kayo yung mong kalipay kay nakuha ni mo mong gusto, karon nga mas dool ka ni Lord. If makasala ka, mag-uol na ka. So what do we do when we see our dirtiness? We need to cleanse our lives. If we want to, be, to continue to be walking with the Lord, if we want to grow in our relationship with the Lord, then we need to cleanse and purify ourselves. The Lord is holy. And there's one word for this. Repent. That's our duty. That's what we are called to do. Repent means admit sa imong sala, pangayag pa sa ilo, and walk away from that sin. If you want to draw near to God, that means na kay mga butang angay ni mong biyaan. A person who is near to the Lord, will humble himself in any conflict because he knows that God is with him. He knows that in the eyes of God, he is secured in him. Let me leave you with this verse. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? You gain all the approval in the world, all the things you can see on social media, a temporary security, selfish gratification, but in the end, you will be separated from God for all eternity. Or you will choose a life Submitted to God 
resisting the devil, drawing near to God, following and cleansing your life. And in the end, He is the one that will exalt you. A security nga dili makuha sa imuha. Conflict will always be part sa tong life because we are living in this broken world. But we can overcome it if we are willing to acknowledge that the problem, the root cause, is ourselves. Everything boils down to our sinful nature. And the Bible is clear. On say solution sa tong sinful nature, we need a Savior. That is only through Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, we deserve to die because of our sinful nature and pay for our sins. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that whoever believes will have eternal life. In short, church, the cure is Christ. Settle first ang conflicts in your heart, O Kang Lord, then you can overcome conflict in this life. And James provided us the things that we need to do in our daily life, not only in our conflict, but our daily commitment in following the Lord. Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil. Draw near to God and humble ourselves before Him. Cure first the conflict in our relationship with the Lord. Then peace will also reign sa atong life. Try to ask yourself, how is your life right now? Is it full of conflict? Is it without peace? The things that are happening in our life will reveal our relationship with the Lord. The response that we do in these events will reveal our relationship with the Lord. If we are full of conflict, then maybe our hearts are in conflict with the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord God, for revealing us this truth. Because most of the time, Lord God, during conflicts, we point our fingers to our brothers. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us, O Lord, for our sinful nature. And mold us for your glory. Help us, O Lord, to see these things in our hearts. If we are blinded by these things, Lord God, reveal it to us. Teach us, Lord God, to humble ourselves before you, to submit our lives before you, Lord God. Help us, O Lord, to resist the devil, to be devoured by anger and emotions, Lord God. To be devoured by our selfish desires, our selfish nature, O Lord. Forgive us, O Father, for there are times that we fail. And yet, Lord, by your word, we can get up again if we only know, if we can only acknowledge our sins. Teach us, Lord God, not to remain in this cycle of blaming others, but to be able to evaluate my life. Heavenly Father, there are a lot of things, Lord God, that are going around us. A lot of events, Lord God, that test our patience. Help us, Lord, to be able to see life in your lens. To be able to see life in your perspective. By your word, O oh Lord. Teach us your ways, O oh Father that we'll be able to share this to others. That we will be able to share that the cure of our sinful nature is Jesus Christ. That if you want to be able to live this life, we will need to follow you because you are the life. And I pray also, Lord God, for our country, I pray, Lord, that as we Christians, Lord God, will live our lives in our workplace, in our community, we'll be able to influence them. We'll be able to influence our community, our workplace, to share you, Lord God, that they will be able to see you in us. That Christians all around the Philippines, Lord God, will have this commitment 
in following you, in influencing others. Lord, we praise you that in our community, that in the Philippines, Lord God, we praise you that we can be able to do this, that we can preach publicly, that we can share the gospel publicly, that we can go out and share freely, Lord, without discrimination. We're so grateful, Lord God, with this freedom. And so we ask, Lord, that we use this freedom, Lord, to be able to share you, the one who transformed our lives, the one who continues to change us, to mature our lives, to complete us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will bless this church. You guide each and every one, Lord God, for your glory. I don't know, Lord, the things that are happening in their lives, but I know that you hear us. I know that you are a God who listens. And so I pray for them, Lord. I pray that they will be able to answer the questions that are in their hearts through your word. And I pray all these things, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior.